was free of the terrorists on his own for some time until he was beaten to the ground. Uh, Peter Kirkwood is uh, previously, uh, Kirk, forgive me, is uh, previously of the Met. You must be very proud of him. I know he's British Transport Police, one of your own though. I'm very proud of all the police officers that are serving at the moment. The police service is in crisis as a result of the cuts. They're being dragged from pillar to post. We hear talk of extra police officers on the street. They're not extra. They're officers that have had their rare leave days cancelled. They've had their 12-hour shifts that are now done routinely extended to 16 hours. They're being drawn from other areas. The officers we see behind us are from Kingston, uh, from uh, Hounslow and Hillingdon. They're not extra officers at all. They're from other duties and they're being burned out. But more armed police officers on the streets than ever before, we're told? Uh, no. Armed police officers no. on the streets than ever before? No, they're not. Basically, people that are alleging that are lying. So the government are lying? Yes. The Defence Secretary is lying? When yes, they, that. they funded bringing us back to this, the number of armed officers we had in 2010 by 2020. And they've got to address a number of issues in order to get there. Police officers do not want to be armed officers because of the way they're treated if they have to confront something like this and pull the trigger. Why, in what way? The IPCC investigations, which set out as persecutions, uh, assuming that they've done something wrong. By all means, investigate the circumstances. And what we saw after Westminster was the way it should be done, and hopefully it will be the way going forward that it is done. But there's a big hill for the IPCC to climb. The Prime Minister was previously, of course, Home Secretary for six years. She's saying that we need to now change the way that we are approaching terrorism here in the United Kingdom. What sort of uh, advice, what sort of support do you think she needs to offer the police service? I heard her speech and she raised four things that needed to change. She missed the most obvious, urgent one, which is to deal with the uh, cuts to ordinary policing. Yes, all those other things that she said, long-term impacts and all the rest of it, yes, they're all valid. But what needs to be done, and it needs to be done immediately, is reverse and stop and reverse the cuts to ordinary policing. They're needed in intelligence gathering from communities. They're needed in monitoring those 23,000 very low-level uh, people that are, inverted commas, known to the police and security services in their communities to see whether they're coming and going, whether things are getting worse or they're getting more and more agitated. They're needed in the response to these incidents. This is all ordinary policing, the initial armed response and the cordons and everything else, and they're needed in the investigation. Yes, there are specialist terrorist investigators, but they're drawn from ordinary CID and they're bolstered by ordinary CID. You said that people don't want to be police officers anymore, so how do you start to recruit them then, even if the, if the Prime Minister and her team say, OK, that's the way we're going to go? The first thing she could stop, and she could stop it tomorrow, is her bad mouthing of police. If you look in the I Tory manual. She did that today, did she? It, it, she doesn't, but nobody believes it because it's against this backdrop of seven years of bad mouthing the police. If you look at the Tory manifesto, the only mention of policing is stop doing stop and search, implying that it's racist. That is the only mention of ordinary policing. And just to clarify, you say that the government is lying about the number of armed police officers that are on the streets of the United Kingdom. Yes, in 2010 we had 1,000 uh, plus more. Um, they are. Uh, they've got a plan in place and they've said they've funded, not totally, but they're part funded, bringing that up again by 2020. We are not there yet. We saw a brilliant response in London here uh, last night. We saw it in Westminster uh, a month or so ago. We saw it in Manchester a couple of weeks ago. If this had happened anywhere else, you would not be seeing that response. It is threadbare elsewhere in the country. Okay, it's good to talk to you, Peter. Thanks so much for joining us on Sky News this afternoon. We are live at the scene of the latest terror.